Hello and welcome to Learning in Technology. My name's Frank and I'm glad that you're here. A great announcement has been made. We finally have breakout rooms in Teams. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create breakout rooms on a Mac. So if you're teaching with a Mac or if you're a participant with a Mac computer, you can participate in breakout rooms. Super easy. If you like this video, hit like. If you want more videos like this, hit subscribe. And of course, share this with anybody you think can benefit from it. Let's go have a look at breakout rooms in Microsoft Teams on a Mac. Okay, so I've started a meeting and I've had a number of people join me. So we've got a number of folks that have joined. And what I want to do is I want to break them into groups so that they can go off and discuss something. So maybe I want them to, uh, to break into groups. And I, don't, I want to randomize those groups. There's a new icon up here. And you'll notice that it's a little square with a square inside. And that's for breakout rooms. Now you have to be a bit careful here. Let me just pop into Teams. If you don't have that icon, make sure that you go up to your uh, little profile picture here and make sure you check for updates. Once you check for updates, you'll have to quit Teams altogether and restart it. Once you do that, you should have the ability to start breakout rooms. If we go into breakout rooms, it will ask you how you want to divide people. So in this case, I can assign three people into one room and that just separates the main room from the other room with everybody in it. Or let's do two breakout rooms. So it's gonna go and say, okay, well you have uh, you know, three students here, so I'm going to break it into one or two participants per room. So obviously with three students, it's not as exciting. If you have four, five, six or more students, it starts breaking it into groups of three or four. I can also manually go through and choose who goes into which room, but I'm gonna go and allow the system to do that. And I'm gonna create those rooms. So the rooms are being created and now you'll notice that I have breakout rooms. Now right now nobody's in any breakout rooms because they're currently closed. So I can do this in advance. I can you know manipulate this while I'm setting up the meeting when the students arrive. I can change you know if I have two students that don't get along with each other or I don't want them to be together in the same room I can move them around. So let's say for example I want to go in here I can choose my participants here. Let's say Clark here. I can choose Clark and I can actually assign Clark into room two. So I'm going to move uh, Diana and Clark are going to be together and Bruce is going to be by himself in that room over there. So you can move people around just simply by selecting them and then assigning them to a room. Also, I may get participants that aren't assigned to any room. That's because they may not have updated their Teams client. So you need to make sure that all of your participants have the latest updated version of Teams as well. Um, now I, I've run Teams on a Mac, I've run them on a Raspberry Pi, I've run them on a Windows machine, and all of those clients will allow you to connect into rooms as long as you have the updated client. Uh, if you're using the web client, it's updated automatically. So we go in here, now we have the breakout rooms, and now I can start the rooms. Look at this. So I go in and I start the rooms, and now everybody's going to disappear from the main room here and be left all alone in the main room. So off my students go into their breakout rooms. And it just takes a few seconds while it opens up those rooms. So there we go. You can see the rooms are open. So now I can see the rooms are open and I'm here. I could invite other people to join in. Late participants can be assigned to rooms. And one of the cool things I can do as an instructor is I can pop in here with the ellipse and I can go and join that room. So let's first of all rename the room. So one of the things I want to do is rename it and we'll call this one, this is going to be equipment. So this, this room is all about discussing the equipment and then maybe this one here, I'll ellipse and rename it and I'll call this, this will all be all about the uh, activities. So we have two folks discussing the activities we're gonna perform and one person discussing equipment by themselves. So I can go in and I can hit the ellipse and I can join that room as an instructor. And then underneath here, now it's me and Bruce just by ourselves in here. And I can go in and I can do things like share content. So I could just pop in here and maybe share the whiteboard. And then Bruce and I could uh, go in and collaborate on a whiteboard. And this whiteboard will be separate from the other room. So this, this whiteboard here will be separate from the other room. The only people seeing this whiteboard will be Bruce and myself. So I can stop presenting there. And <coughs> you can see here that it was just Bruce and I that were in the room. So all of my sharing functions, all of my file work here, if I do a chat, it's just gonna be Bruce and I in there, nobody else. Uh, I can look at participants, it's gonna say who's in this room. So this here is all of the 
breakout options that I have just for this room. So I'm going to return to the main room. Okay, so Bruce and I have had a conversation. Now I'm going to go in and I'm going to join in with uh, Diana and Clark. So we'll go in here and we'll join this room. And now I can say, you know, okay, how are things going with you two? We're chatting, sharing, all of the things that I can do in any meeting. So I'll just return out of there as well. Now let's say I've got a number of breakout rooms and you can just notice I can use the drop down menu to see who's in what room and I can collapse them. I can add a room if I want to add another room in there. Now nobody's going to be in this room because I don't have enough participants for that. But I can go in and create a room if I want and I can, you know, rename this the break room. Or the timeout room. Maybe I'll put in here people who <coughs> aren't playing nice, they'll all go in a room together. Uh, that would be a bad idea. But you'll notice that these rooms are open and my breakout room is closed. So I can pre-populate a whole bunch of rooms. This can be really cool if I'm doing different types of activities. So for example, I could have a phased approach where I open up a room or a series of rooms, put students in there, and then once they've completed phase one of an activity, put them into a set of other rooms and sort of keep things nice and discreet. Now let's say it's time for everybody to come back to the main classroom and I want everybody to be back in the main room. I can hit the ellipse up here and I can make a announcement. So if I go in here, the announcement can be, uh, we will reconvene in five minutes. Okay, so I'll go here and we're gonna reconvene in five minutes. And now every single room has received that announcement. So everybody else on their computers has received the announcement that we're reconvening in five minutes. Um, you'll also notice if I select a room like the equipment room here and you go in here, um, I can go in. Uh, it, you can't make specific announcements to specific rooms. It's sort of an announcement to everybody, but I could go into this room and I could you know, join up the room and I could say something along the lines of, hey, Bruce, we're going to you know, hit the chat here and say, you know, notice, oh, here's the announcement. So I could say here is, are, are you ready? So something along those lines, so I can have a private conversation. You can see that they got the chat in there. It would have also have come across their screen and I'm going to return there. So there we have Teams uh, breakout rooms in Teams on a Mac. Okay, so there, there are many possibilities that we now have available to us. Breakout rooms are a very effective way of getting people apart uh, in order to discuss topics, making sure that we only have four, five, six people within a conversation group breaking them apart, bringing them back to a classroom environment. It is one of the key elements of effective online teaching, and I hope you explore and use this feature an awful lot. Again, hit like, subscribe for more videos, share with colleagues, and we'll see you in the next videos.